In section 1 we have seen how to create a test suite and we have also written couple of test cases. So let us start with a fresh test case here. So let's say the name of the test case is TC1 and then we, when you need to write the test steps you need to hit a tab key and then you can write your keywords or the actions that you want to perform inside that test case. So since we have not gone through any of the inbuilt functions or any other library functions. I'm just logging different messages inside this test case. So log, then test message one, test message two and three. Similarly, if I copy and paste and I create another test case, TC2, and similarly, I can create the third one, TC3. So in total, we have created three test cases and all three test cases have these three steps in common, right? Let us run these test cases and see what happens when we run it and we'll go through the reporting part as well. To run the test cases, you just need to right click on the test suite and then run as robot test suite. And here you will get the report. So it will clearly show you that how many test cases you have ran, how many test cases have been passed and how many have been failed. It also gives you very minute details about what is the time elapsed and how much time each step has taken actually. Right, so here you can see that all the three test cases with all the three test steps are clearly mentioned in the reports and we can expand it to see what result has been achieved by this step. Now since all the three test cases had something in common, so every common part which we have in different test cases we can keep them aside and put it in a function. In robot terminology we can call this function as user keyword and we insert user keywords in a test suite using keywords section and under that section you can again define functions like the way you were creating test cases so let's say the name of the first function is common function one and we have one step here just to log the message which we can put here in common function one and instead of logging the message directly in the test case i just call this function three times let's see what happens when i run this test suite so basically for test case one, I'm calling the function three times. So it should print that message three times. So we see here it printed test message. This is message three times. And for other two, it was printing the messages with serial number, right? So we were able to perform first test here where we called the user keyword inside the test case. Now, if we need to parameterize this user keyword or the function, we can use arguments. So we can give the argument like this. And then while printing the message, we can use that variable. And while we were calling the method from the test case, we can provide the argument after putting a tab. So you can put the tab and then you can give the messages, test message one, two, and three for all the three calls that you are making to that user keyword. So now it should work as it was working earlier. And obviously it is not the best way of writing the test cases or user keywords, but I just wanted to explain you how we create user keywords and how we pass parameters in the user keywords. So if we see the report here, we have the exactly same output as we were getting earlier. Now we need to understand what is the right way if we have this kind of situation where three test cases have all the things in common or maybe some of the things in common. So if we have three test cases like this, which have almost all the things common and maybe some things which are uncommon, we can cut the common part and we can put it inside the user keyword like this. And in the test cases, we can just remove that common part and we can call the function like this. Now, if we run it, we see here, we have reduced the total number of lines in the code that we had. And we have the same output if we can check here. Yes, we exactly have the same output. Like we had a section for user keywords, we also have a section for settings. And inside that settings section, we have a couple of features that we can include in our test suite. So for example, the first one is documentation. You can give a documentation to your test suite. So for example, I put a documentation which states, this is a test suite which covers 
maybe like login page features so if I run this with the documentation in the settings my report would have this documentation here now after the documentation we have two very important settings that we can do one is suite setup and the other one is suite teardown so if we want to execute something before all the test cases of a test suite we can put it in suite setup if we want to execute something after all the test cases of a test suite are executed we can put it in suite teardown so in the settings we have liberty to add suite setup and suite teardown now as an argument to suite setup we can either call a user keyword or probably we can give the function name directly so for sake of simplicity I'm not creating a user keyword here I'm just adding a log message here so switch setup with a log keyword here and then log function needs an argument which is the message that I want to print again I'll put a tab and then I'll give the argument which is my name for example so before all the test cases are executed it would be printing my name over there and we can see here if we run it we'll see in the report that it executed log kamal before all the test cases are executed now we'll put suite teardown also so suite teardown again i use the log message and this time i give my surname over here so that i can easily recognize which one is the setup and the other one is teardown so i run the test suite again and let us have a look at the report of it so here it is showing that it executed log kamal first and then log gather and then it executed three test cases which is not the right representation actually what happened is it executed setup and then it executed three test cases and then it executed teardown the way it is represented in the report is not correct here but if you check the logs here you will get an idea that it executed this camel first and then it executed all the three test cases and at the end it executed the suite teardown part so after suite setup and suite teardown we also have liberty to add setup and teardown methods for test cases so these are test setup and test teardown so if we add something in test setup that means before every test case of this test suite that setup test setup method would be called and after every test case it would be executing test teardown so if you see the report here it executes test setup and then it executes the actual test and then it executes test teardown it comes to second one again it executes the test setup and then the actual test case and then tear down so it goes like this so once you define test setup and tear down at suite level it will follow the same pattern for all the test case of that test suite all right so let us have a look at the another setting that we can make here so i delete the setup and tear down methods for test cases and the one that we are going to see right now is timeout now this timeout is for every test case of that test suite so if you define a timeout here for example one second or probably 10 seconds for the test cases to be executed so if a particular test case takes more than that, that time it would automatically fail to make our one of the test case fail what we can do is we can add a delay of 10 seconds in the first test case and since the test timeout is one second we know that this test case is going to take more than one second and if we run it we'll see the report we'll see that one of the test cases failed which is test case one and the reason is because the timeout was one second and it took more than that this is important when we need to add a timeout when we want that our test case do not get stuck at a particular window or a particular operation for hours so this was a section that we have added at suite level and we were able to add couple of settings for example suite setup and teardown and test setup and teardown at suite level but yes 
for a specific test case if you want to add setup and tear down and not for all the test cases of suite you can put these setup and tear down at test case levels as well to explain this concept what i do is i add a section with test setup and test tear down and inside that i just log a message test setup one and test tear down one which is at the top and for test case one for example i add a setup and tear down which is for example test setup two and test tear down two one and two i just made to distinguish that which one is at suite level and which one is at a particular test case level so both of these setup and tear downs are for test cases and not for test suite we need to see what happens if we have both Apart from this, we also have liberty to add documentation, which we can add at suite level and also at test case level. So we add that and we'll see what happens when we run these test cases. So here we can see that for test case one, it has printed test setup two and test tear down two and not the one which we have defined at suite level. For all the other test cases, it has followed the one that we have defined in test setup and test tear down. So what I want to explain here is that if you have setup and tear down defined at test case level, it would override the test setup and tear down, which we would define in the settings section. I hope this is clear to you. If you need more clarification, we'll be covering this topic in detail in the third lecture of section two. We'll see you later. Thank you.